good morning. Welcome back to Gagey Plans. I haven't done one of these driving around videos in a while because um, I haven't been driving around in a while. But today I am. I'm back to work now and that's what I'm talking about in this video. So if you're not interested, hit subscribe and I'll see you on Sunday. Um, <laughs> on Thursday, I mean. Yeah, today I uh, just got back from dropping off, or I'm on my way back home from dropping off the girls. Um, I'm sending them still to the babysitter. So it was kind of an adjustment, um, well, sort of a, a progression, I guess. We went into like strict lockdown uh, when I went on maternity leave at 36 weeks and then stayed in pretty strict lockdown until um, our baby got her two month shots just before Thanksgiving. So it was a lot of like saying no as a default and um, sort of living in a little bit of fear, but there was a lot at stake. Because for one thing, you're more susceptible um, to things when you're pregnant generally, as well as they say that you're more likely to be hospitalized or need interventions or whatever if you get COVID while you're pregnant. And then um, uh, when I talked to the doctors, they're actually more concerned about the baby, even though people say, you know, people who don't probably understand what it's like to worry about your child getting sick of something that you don't understand. Um, you know, people are like, oh, well, kids don't get it as much. Kids don't pass it on as much. Kids don't get a, a bad case, which may or may not be true. But when you're brand new, uh, the first few months of life, like especially the first month, if you get a fever, you have to be hospitalized and get a lumbar puncture to rule out something meningitis or I don't know, something super serious. And so uh, even just that, like I don't want my brand new baby getting sick. Um, and honestly, looking back, we probably should have been more strict with who was visiting when we had our first because, um, you know, babies are delicate, but Back then, you know, uh, there were people like visiting our house when we came home from the hospital. My husband was like, oh, we didn't really see people. I'm like, yeah, there were people in our house when we came home from the hospital. Well, I guess later that day. And then we went and we visited my in-laws the very next day. I don't really have any regrets, but um, it could have been, it could have been less. It was fine because I had the nursery to go and retreat to. Um, there's only one time where I felt like anybody had overstayed a welcome. Not the point. The point is this time um, we were pretty self-isolated. We had a couple of people come by for window visits where we are like a zoo exhibit and they came to our front window and called on a speakerphone and chatted. It was uh, it was kind of weird because at that point like you, you expected to be hospitable but it was like please don't come in. Um, we had to say no to a lot of people but um, once she got her two month shots. It was like a little bit, well actually it was before her two month visit. It was after she turned two months. Um, she wasn't gonna get her two month visit until like December, but she was already two months old on November 16th. So we scheduled a nurse appointment for just the vaccinations before Thanksgiving because those are important. And it's not just that like now she's got some immunity to pertussis, but it is that. It's also um, that she's old enough now that her immune system is getting a bit more robust on its own as well. And so she's uh, you know, a little bit more capable of handling something. So by that point, I had, was fed up with quarantine, like we all were. I was getting to that point at the six month mark just like everybody else. Around like August, September, people were starting to get really antsy. Um, and so was I. So I was uh, looking forward to November, December, you know, opening things up a little bit. But again, of course, this big, you know, spike came. So things have been still more locked down than I'd like. But, you know, that's true of this whole year, I think. But we did go to um, the playground like almost every day while I was alone with the girls for a few weeks. So that was good, just, you know, trying to be as careful as possible, wearing masks and stuff, but I still haven't been inside a store barely at all. Um, anyway, the point of all of this is to say, now all bets are kind of off because we can't control who our babysitter sees. She has a big family and she's in contact with most of her family, but 
that's just, you know, the level of underlying risk that we have to take. Um, my father-in-law watches her two days a week and he works in like a warehouse and he uh, got a possible exposure last, last week, no, the week before. And so he wasn't able to watch them for those two days. Uh, but I was glad that, you know, it turns out that it probably wasn't as big a you know, risk as anything, but he, uh, he wanted to make sure he'd get tested before he watched the girls. And I so appreciate that because that's like laying the groundwork of, I know that I can trust you to tell me if something, you know, might be a possible, um, I, I appreciate that because so many times you're hearing people say, oh, I'm being safe, but like, what does being safe mean? This has turned into a COVID video instead of a back to work video but the point is I'm back to work now um, and I'm doing a bit of a commute for a change and so that's why I'm here behind the field and I'm pumping and I'm taking it seriously this time because for one thing they still have me working from home it was going to be like three weeks or it was going to be at least one week then it was at least two more weeks and now it's like indefinitely possibly because of the risk is still high Possibly it might just be for me. They might want to just keep me working from home so they don't have to buy me a mini fridge uh, for my milk. <laughs> but I've already arranged to have like an actual office, at least for a while, so that I can close the door and keep working while I'm home. I know they say output's not as great or whatever, but I really am liking my output when I do four pumping sessions per day instead of three. Uh, and those are all then during work hours instead of my lunch break. So that would really cut into my productivity if I could work through that. And I don't think I'd be able to keep it up. But fortunately, they're being supportive. And, uh, <laughs> I have been drinking this, uh, what is it called? Traditional medicinals? Their mother's milk tea. And I'm not a fan of licorice, but it's not that bad. And so I put up with it and I've been drinking like two to four cups a day and I think it's been helping because my output is almost doubled. Um, so I'm pumping four times during the work day and then again at night because I, uh, I'm a little bit paranoid about running out of milk. What happened with my first was that uh, I was doing fine. My milk stock was staying up, um, you know, and on the climb or whatever but that was like early on I was taking a day off per week and my husband was at first two and my parent my parents were taking two days and then my father-in-law was taking one day or maybe the other way around but my in-laws were taking two days um, and so we weren't using the babysitter yet and also I was able to come home and nurse during my lunch break I think all of that worked really well for my milk supply but then several things happened all at once around Christmas was I, uh, my cycles came back. We started sending her to the babysitter more frequently. It started out as three days a week and ended up, it started up as one and ended up being three days a week. Um, and she started on solid foods. And so all of those combined led, I think, to the fact that she would consistently drink more at the babysitters than I was pumping for her. And um, I was, for a while, I spent like a good week or two power pumping in the evening and watching BSG memories. And uh, <laughs> like that helped a little bit, but I was never able to keep up. And so by, I think around nine months, I ran out of my freezer stash and had to start supplementing with formula just at the babysitters. Um, and then I started to just get more comfortable with that, you know, slowly more comfortable with that idea and then um, yeah I stopped pumping at 11 months because by that point I had pretty much dried up a lot um, I was only pumping about half an ounce all day and it was so frustrating because for one thing I didn't have an office and so I was like borrowing people's offices pumping twice during you know while I was at the office and then again at home and still only getting like half an ounce all day day and that's just not worth it so I stopped around 11 months that pretty much crashed anything that I had left um, and she stopped nursing at 13 months so I would like like she pretty much did stop nursing because my supply went down um, which is a shame like she did it on her own she probably could have if she had really really wanted
by quantity over quality. Um, and so she, uh, she stopped nursing and just started drinking a cup of cow's milk once she was a year old. She would prefer that in the morning. So anyway, that's what happened with my first. I, in theory, would prefer to nurse my second daughter a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to probably stop pumping at work if, when she turns a year old anyway. Um, or maybe a little sooner. Because like once she doesn't need to, like when she's allowed to drink cow's milk, no, it's not just a matter of formula being so expensive. When she's allowed to drink cow's milk, and like it'll just be more for comfort than for sustenance, we can just nurse in the morning and in the evening, and that will be that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. This is my entire commute. Um, I'm almost home, which is fortunate. But it's a uh, to do my work. It's, it's good to be working from home. I appreciate the opportunity and it's nice to be able to like, you know, I have a load of laundry I need to do and I can do that instead of just like grabbing a cup of coffee and chatting with the co-workers, which probably is down to zilch now. I still haven't worked in an office since COVID started. Uh, I was one of the first people to be sent home to work and I haven't been back. So that will happen soon enough and I'll probably make a video about it when it does. Uh, if you if you work in an office like that's open right now, tell me what it's like for you. Like, are you wearing a mask 24/7? Do you have like an office that you can keep closed? Is everybody like all subdued and quiet, or is everyone pretending it's normal? Like, I'm, I'm ugh, there's a lot of things that I'm still sort of uncomfortable with because like I haven't been into a grocery store since I think I went in once in like April because I needed pickle and spice. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, subscribe again so you don't miss my videos. I post twice a week and uh, they're not all this rambly. <laughs> the next one on Thursday is going to be um, possibly, is it already time for a monthly plan with me? I don't know. Um, if it's not, it'll be something great. <laughs> I'll see you then. Bye.